Hello Saguaros! Today I'm going over all of the bath oils that I picked up from Lush. Now it's not every single one of them. I'm actually really disappointed because I wanted to get furs but I can't find it anywhere. Out of like the four Lush stores that I went to, couldn't find it. But I do have some other ones so let's go over those. I do want to mention that every single one of these demos was done at 114 degrees. So every single one was that hot. They're all extremely slow at melting so I didn't film all of it because it's really boring. The colors you see in the bowl are obviously way more concentrated than they would be in a bathtub but I wanted to show you them in the bowl so I could get up close and more like precise and we could actually see the details in these bath oils. That's why I did not do them in the bathtub. You'll also see a lot of them pulsate which is really weird but kind of cool. I also want to put a caution out for bath oils. Bath oils will leave your tub a slimy mess. Yes, there are rings left behind. You have to clean your tub after you use it. You might slip when using a bath oil. And really, the only other thing is that the oil is so dense that if you are sitting still in the tub, it's kind of unadvised because you need to swish the water around and be mobile. Otherwise, the oil will only be around your waist or however you sit. Like, wherever the water line is on you is where you will have oil. So mix well and often. And don't get it in your hair unless you want oily hair. Moving on. First up is Flowers Borrow. Soaking in a tub with floating petals sounds like the ultimate bathing experience, right? Add that to moisturizing organic shea and cocoa butters, rose absolute, and extra virgin coconut oil and you're in heaven. This luxurious bath oil, with its nod to an Iron Age Hillfort in Dorset, England, brings the floral sense of the English countryside to your bath time experience. A wonderfully unique soak in the tub. Most of you know I am not a fan of dead flowers in my bathtub. It's not so much about the cleanup for me as it is the unappealing dead things. However, these dead flowers make this bath oil so unique and very pretty to watch. People rave about how rosy this oil smells, but to me it's more herbal, more woodsy, like being in a forest. I love the scent of this one and I love the visuals of this one. It seems to be a bit more frothy than the others as well. But yeah, cleanup is uh, a bitch. Next up is dream time. For those evenings when you need to forget the day and dream your cares away, this sleepy bath melt is loaded with lavender oil and sandalwood to lure you to dreamland. A relaxing display of royal purple and gold gently unfolds on the water as you soak into the moisturizing magic of fair trade organic cocoa butter. Stress? What stress? Of course, I really enjoy the scent of dream time. It's not 100% twilight, but you do get a lot of lavender coming through. It's a very relaxing, just before bedtime kind of bath oil. And this little guy is is chock full of gold shimmer. It gives off a beautiful display. Very mesmerizing watching this one. The Z turning into an N, back to a Z, all along with the little pulsations. It's quite hypnotic. Next up is Floating Island. Sink into the tub and escape to your own fragrant, soothing island of tranquility. Sandalwood oil, vanilla, and lemon oil create a dreamy scent to soothe the soul, while organic cocoa and shea butters transform your bath water into a silky, softening sanctuary. Lie back and slip away to an island of luxury and emerge ready to take on the real world. You can tell my floating island is old, not because of the bubbles from being in the freezer, but because of the cinnamon stick in the center. Apparently, they are now just dusting the top with cinnamon powder. Sorry, Saguaros, you missed out on the coolness of the old ones. This oil smells like baked vanilla. It's so nice and warming, almost like a cupcake, but not as sweet. And this particular one also screams cinnamon, but that's because of the stick. Not quite sure how much spice you'll get out of the new ones. I don't see any reviews of people mentioning cinnamon at all. This oil to me is one of the most moisturizing, but the scent doesn't last all that long when you get out of the tub. Next up is the Cloak of Invisibility. This one you guys may remember from my Tucson trip where Miette had her hands all in the bowl and got it everywhere. 
When you feel like vanishing for a while, slip into the tub and cloak yourself in romantic jasmine absolute and rosewood oils. A layer of secret shimmer rises to the surface as moisturizing fair trade cocoa butter envelops your skin in a softening embrace. It's the perfect escape. This particular bath oil is unlike the others because it has more of a bath bomb feel to it if this is in foams. My main question is how on earth can Lush call this cloak of invisibility but isn't allowed to call secret arts dark arts anymore? Somebody? Anyone? Want to answer that for me? Cloak of invisibility also disperses a lot of gold shimmer if you're into that kind of thing. I'm not really a fan of the scent, but if you're a fan of the Lust perfume or the Godiva shampoo bar, then you'll really like this. The next orangey one I got is Ginger. After enjoying this glittering bath melt, you'll have ginger on your mind all day long. Well, so they claim. The usual suspects soften the skin. Organic shea and cocoa butters, along with extra virgin coconut and yojoba oils. Once you drop it in the tub, you'll be treated to a golden dance as you're greeted by uplifting ylang ylang, stimulating ginger, and balancing juniper berry oil. This one will linger long after you leave the tub. Not sure if any of you remember a few years back I had a weird allergic reaction to a bath cocktail, and that's why I never did any cocktails until a few videos ago. Ago. You've Been Mangoed was a part of that original cocktail, and I'm pretty sure the culprit of my reaction. Let's now talk about ginger. Uh, yeah, I had a reaction. Ginger, all by itself. Not as bad as the last time, but here's what happened. I briefly splashed the tub water over my face. Like, that's it. I didn't massage into my face or try to drown myself. I just simply dipped my hands in the water and splashed real quick. My lips went numb and kind of burned. Thanks, Ginger. I mean, other than that, it's okay. The copper shimmer is nice. The scent is a little musky too. The last bath oil I have for you is mmm, melting marshmallow. For a sweet, sweet bath, there is a sweet, sweet treat. And in this sweet, sweet bath, take a sweet, sweet tea. All right, I'm already over this. I'm over this description. Let your troubles mm, melt away as skin is softened and soothed by shea butter, almond oil, and calamine. Watch as the two-tone vivid pink and golden yellow halves unfurl to paint a dreamy sunset swirl on the water. And take in the nostalgic cotton candy scent. When you're ready to face reality again, it'll be with luxuriously soft and sweetly scented skin. I'm surprised at how long this one took to melt. Maybe because of how dense it is? Yeah, it does smell like cotton candy, but it's mostly marshmallows to me. I enjoy the faint shimmer and the colors as well. Those are the bath oils that I tried. Have you tried any of them? Any of the ones that I tried? Let me guess, you guys got furs. Like everyone else in the world got furs, but not me. So how was furs? Let me know, tell me. I wanna know what furs is like, it's so pretty. Next week, I am going to attempt to put my sparkle jar in a tin. Kind of like a few weeks ago, I did the applicator for Full of Grace. Well, now we're going to find another Reddit slash Instagram, whatever, DYI, and we'll see how it goes. So be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next week.